Hello everyone, welcome back. A perfect opportunity to touch up and follow the previous video I did today on the antenna tuners. If you haven't watched that and you're new to the hobby, you might want to check out my video about what an antenna tuner is really doing. And the people that may not know, they think that with a wire outside at any length, their tuner says it's a one-to-one -one SWR, they have full forward power and zero reflected power, but they don't understand that that doesn't mean you have a good antenna. The key is having a resonant antenna, not tricking your radio to think that your antenna is resonant. So to follow up on that, I have something here that I just thought about after I was reading the comments, something I should have made a video on seven months ago. And I'll use this as an example to show you when someone asked, what about a resonant antenna for mobile applications? Or, you know, do you use a tuner mobile? Actually, no. Uh, a good example of a resonant antenna for a mobile in one situation would be this MFJ 1668. Now, I've had this for several months, and the reason I bought this was because I wanted a resonant antenna for my mobile when I was playing HF while mobile. I didn't end up using this for that reason because my vehicle, I got a bigger vehicle, and with this thing on top and the antennas on top of it, it's way too high, I'll hit power lines. So, I can't use this mobile anymore, but you know what I saved it for? I saved it for portable operations, for setting it up in a driveway or at field day. A very simple antenna here that is resonant on the band that you choose. This goes six through 80 meters, but let me explain exactly what's happening with this antenna so that you can understand, even with something like this, this is called a manual screwdriver antenna. Even with something like this, you do not need a tuner. This will be a resonant antenna. Let me explain. So let me explain. So there's a lot of opportunities and uh, models of HF antennas for portable, for home, for mobile, okay? But the reason that I picked this was because I wanted something that had the ability to do a lot of different bands. But the caveat to this is, it's a manual screwdriver antenna. So what that means is you have to manually tune this every time you wanna switch bands. Not a big problem, unless you're driving all day long and you don't wanna get out of the car and tune it. That could be a problem. But the advanced model of this would be like a Tar Heel. Uh, a motorized up and down, but let me explain to you what's happening here and why this is so much more important than having a one antenna with a tuner. Let me explain. What's happening here is this has a 3 8 by 24 inch stud here. I'll show you on the bottom. And what I had that really in was the MFJ Goliath mag mount. It's got the three magnets. That may or may not work for you. It just depends on your vehicle and what you're gonna be hitting, okay? You can also use this on a bumper mount, um, on the side fender mount, however you wanna mount it. But what this is doing is you have your antenna here, this is the base, and then you have two different telescopic whips. Now this is a four and a half foot whip, and this is designed for when you're mobile. They also give you a 10 foot whip, and the 10 foot whip is not designed to be mobile because 10 foot on this plus the height of your vehicle, you're gonna hit bridges and power lines and you'll die if you hit a power line you know, with this. So. That's really why I kept this thing, even though I don't do HF Mobile anymore, was because I wanted this for, I could set up quickly at my grandparents' house, at a park, I could throw it on a tripod, throw the 10 foot extended whip out and tune the antenna. So let's go further. Those are just the telescopic whips, right? So what's happening here is, and I'll show you what I had done here earlier, uh, months ago. What's happening is this is using your car uh, frame or body as the counterpoise and the antenna itself moves, okay? What you're basically doing, if you're new to the hobby and you don't understand, the lower the frequency, the longer the antenna. The shorter the frequency, the shorter the antenna. That's why a two meter rubber duck antenna is real small, and an 80 meter dipole goes 134 roughly feet, you know? Because the lower the frequency, the longer the antenna. So how do you accomplish that with something like this? Basically what's happening is, your antenna or your feed point goes into where this is mounted on the mount. Your car acts as the counterpoise and the signal goes up. Now, all the way closed would be the shortest form, 
with the whip on top for six meters. Now, if you wanted to go to say 20 meters, well, you just loosen the thumb screw and you move the antenna. Now what's happening is, you can see here, <clears throat> there's like PVC under there and there's a bunch of coil that's wrapped up, right? And there's little fingers in there that are touching those. So what you're really doing is you're adding length to make this electrically longer. Now this is a compromised antenna. A full length quarter wave antenna on 40 meters would be 32 feet, I think. So how would you get 40 meters on here? Well, it just depends. Every installation is gonna be different, but you would move this up and down and find where it's resonant on 40 because your antenna here with the amount of windings plus the whip on the top equals electrically 32 feet, or 34 feet, okay? So 80 meters being that that's the longest would be pretty much all the way down, right? So now you have, your signal comes in, you have the most amount of windings that are being used in here plus the whip on top of the antenna. But being at six meters is only, I don't know, six feet, five feet. You know, you'd put that to the top roughly. Now there's some tuning involved. So what I'll show you here is when I had this on the car originally, I had it marked. So I used a marker and what I would do is sit out there with the antenna analyzer. I put the antenna on the roof and I kind of went like this. Okay. And now I was looking at the analyzer. Okay. I'm a little long, so I would shorten it up. Right. And then I was a little short, so I you know, lengthen it. So I found basically 10, 20, uh, 15, 40, 80 meters and did it this way. And then I kind of knew where roughly I would be. So if I wanted 20 meters, I would go like this. Okay. And you can see I had it right there on that line. I knew I was, a, and then when I look at the analyzer, it's like 1.4 to one, but here's the key. This was resonant on 20 meters when I had this at 20 meters. I, you know, here's, here's the opposite way of doing it. Going like this, setting it for 80 and then using a tuner for 20 meters or 15 meters. Your SWR is going to be off the charts, but if you use a tuner mobile, what's going to happen is it's not tuning your antenna. Again, it's going to match and trick your radio to think that this is resonant. So your, your goal here is to have an antenna that is resonant so that when you put a hundred Watts in a hundred Watts is coming out the antenna, no tuner involved. The same thing happens with a tar heel, as I said, except it's automatic. You go up and down as you're transmitting and you can watch the SWR on your radio go because basically it's doing the same thing motorized. It's going up and down and, and wherever you put it and you'll see, okay, I have a one-to-one -one there. Perfect. The only difference between that and this is this is manual. So some people maybe only use 40 meters. They only use 80 meters. Fine. Set it to 80 meters or 40 or wherever, you know, get it one-to-one -one and away you go. You'll have a 40 meter mobile antenna. But for me, again, I'm not going to be using this mobile as I first intended. That's why I kind of forgot about it. This is going to be um, set up in a tripod at the park one day, you know, with the 10 footer. I set it up in a tripod and if I wanted to change bands that day, I could walk over to it, go lower, go to 40 meters and I'm done. You know, it's that quick. Um, but that's really to touch on what I was talking about with tuners is this is resonant one band at a time, wherever you tune this. If you want it to work on 15 meters, you tune it to 15. You're one to one, uh, closest, closest possible to one to one, you know, 1.3 to one is fine, but you will have an effective antenna. Now, again, this is compromised. The only other way of doing that would be to have a full length, you know, 16 foot vertical on 20 meters on your car. And obviously that's not uh, practical for mobile. So um, this is the uh, MFJ 1668, I think it was. And um, I think the price on this right here was uh, $179. A motorized Tar Heel is roughly up to $400. They have a Tar Heel Junior, uh, Tar Heel Mini, I guess, and then the full size Tar Heel. But if you smack that on something, you're gonna you know, feel sorry when you see the price tag to replace it. Um, one more thing is this right here is for your, your ground connection for your counterpoise. In the manual, it'll tell you, it comes with a little ring terminal, you put it on here, and basically this goes to the ground of your car and it will affect the tuning based on how this is spread apart, like that, and where you put it. Now what I did was I had it on the mag mount and I had this thing wrapped around one of the bolts on the mag mount. That wasn't really the best for mobile because 
I'm still only using the capacitance effect or capacitive coupling between a magnet and the body of the antenna or the body of the car. So um, to have this on a solid ground on your vehicle, which may be tricky in your situation, but that's how you get the most effective counterpoise to balance out your SWR and to have your, uh, you know, your, your counterpoise for the best radiation of the signal. Um, but this anyways is, is okay and practical to use for a vehicle. Just remember, don't use the 10 footer on your vehicle. Um, I have a full size transit. So if I put this thing, uh, up towards the top on the roof, or I mean, it's gonna be like 20 feet high with that antenna, so that's why I can't do that. But, anyways, that's your little uh, segment. Now, somebody asked also, what about hamsticks? Absolutely, hamsticks, like you saw on my picture or video of the MFJ Octopus, that has eight hamsticks, two per band. So you have 20 meter, 40 meter, 6 meter, 10 meter, whatever four you choose, but those are resonant on those bands. So essentially you don't need a tuner for four bands on that octopus. That's why that's such a great antenna. Same thing with the cobweb. The, what is it, eight band cobweb I had and the five band. Those are eight individual bands that are tuned and resonant on that antenna. If you got a cobweb and you put 80, 40, 20, and 10 meter hamsticks, now you're gonna tune it for 15. Well, you can tune it if you didn't wanna buy 15 meter hamsticks, but it's not gonna be as effective as if you had a set of 15 meter hamsticks on there. So those are also compromised because they're shrunken into a shorter fashion with windings of wire, much like this, much like this, excuse me. And that gives you uh, the electrical length of the band that you want without having the great length of antenna. So sometimes we have to compromise, but I'd rather have a resonant compromised antenna than a compromised antenna that's nowhere near the band I want and then load it up with a tuner and expect to get good results. It's, it's hard enough to work 80 and 40 meters mobile with a uncompromised antenna than it is, you know, it's just as hard or even harder with a compromised one. So the lower the bands mobile, the harder it is. 160 meters mobile, if you have worked 160 mobile, let me know how you did because I know that's a really tough band to do mobile with the power line noise, the sun spots uh, noise, um, and the engine noise, and then trying to fit 165 or 265 feet of wire into a shortened antenna on your mobile. It makes it very, very compromised. The more metal in the air, the better. Hope that cleared up a little bit more and touched on the antenna tuner video I just did. So thanks for watching 7.3 from KJ4YZI.